Oh, hello. I didn't see you there. Well, come on in. I'm glad you're here. There's something I'd like to share with you. This is going to be a little nostalgia video. It's a walk through that very specific time in my life that really helped influence my interests and guided the path that I would eventually find myself on. We all have our influences, and we all have that one thing that truly moves us. And you know what I'm talking about. That specific thing that keeps us awake at night because we can't stop thinking about it. That thing that drives us and fulfills us so much that our lives would suffer without it. For me, without a doubt, that thing is art. I love to draw and paint, and without that, I can't imagine what what my life would be. And though my tastes have changed over the years, it all started with my very first love, comic books. It's been a long time since I've purchased a comic book, but in my childhood and teenage years, I was consumed by the lure of glossy, colorful cover art, bold lettering, and the stories. Of course, I was more interested in the artwork than anything else, but I loved it all. I remember summers away from school, spent playing basketball with friends and going to the comic book store, spending my few dollars on new books and then waiting for my mom to pick me up. This was the early 90s and the Atlanta Braves were chasing first place and we all believed they could do it. From worst to first, it can happen. The names Smoltz, Pendleton, Gant and Justice, I mean just to name a few, are just as heroic to my youth as Spider-Man or Batman. Now. That ball team is long gone, but the comic heroes remain. Some forgotten in the back of a dusty box, while some, in particular, never forgotten. Just temporarily pushed aside. This video is a tribute to glorious comic books. That thing that first got me interested in art, and some of the specific issues that did it. First on the list, Detective Comics number 619. I will be honest, I don't remember anything about the story or the artwork, but this issue was majorly significant to me because this was my very first comic book ever. I knew that comic books needed to be protected in plastic. So for years, this was the only issue I owned that was carefully wrapped and taped in a saran wrapped cocoon. Next, there's Detective Comics number 617. Real quick, there's a scene in the story that takes place in a museum. Joker knocks over a heavy totem pole and Batman gets pinned underneath. Joker, he sets fire to the place and this is when I actually noticed the artwork for the first time. Artist Norm Brayfogel really captured the intensity of the moment in Batman's expression. But what really interested me the most was the anatomy of Batman's arms and shoulders as he struggled to lift this immense totem pole off of himself. Now, it's been 25 years or more since I've looked at this picture, but I, I can see it vividly in my mind all of this time, and that's how much of an impact it had on me. Then came my time obsessed with X-Force. It was just too freaking cool. I mean, the characters and the wild action scenes were just the best. All of my friends were into X-Force too, and it didn't matter that at times it could be absurdly exaggerated. Who cares? Rob Liefeld's style was so unique, we ate it up and asked, please sir, may I have some more? There were three comic book artists that I tried to copy, and Rob Liefeld was the first and without realizing it at the time, that all important part of the artistic journey had begun. Musicians start by copying the music of the bands they love. Writers try to write like the greats of the past. Artists copy the artists that inspire them. So that's what I did. Sure. 
shortly after I moved on to The King, The Man, Spider-Man. The reboot in the early 90s, written and drawn by none other than Todd McFarland, blew my mind. The somewhat cartoonish look his drawings so often took was offset with a very satisfying depiction of violence and an attention to detail that was nearly microscopic. I knew that I wanted to draw like Todd McFarland. The first handful of issues had Spider-Man battling wits and webs against the lizard, and each book is filled with dark and bloody imagery. I mean, tailor-made for a teenage boy. I spent more time trying to draw like Tom McFarlane than any other artist. The next and last artist whose style I tried to copy was Jim Lee, and specifically his X-Men. The X-Men, like Spider-Man, got a fresh start in the early 90s, and I started like many others on the very first issue which was, of course, printed with four different covers, and I had to have them all. Jim Lee's work was so complete as an artist. Yes, the beauty of his drawings, but also with such amazing compositions and the emotions that he was able to convey with his pictures, they just became real. If comic books were films, Jim Lee would be Spielberg. I tried but I was never able to do what Jim Lee did. And it was my time copying Jim Lee's X-Men that transitioned me into finding my own personal style. So, thank you Jim, Todd, and Rob for inspiring us and leading generations of upcoming artists to their path. Next, we come to two issues whose only relation to each other that I'm aware is that they were my venture into connoisseurship. Well, not really, but to me, when I purchased Conan number 16 and Batman number 190 for a most hearty sum, man, I thought I was big time. These were my first and last efforts into venturing into the highly prestigious realm of true collectibles. Now, they're not worth much now, and they certainly weren't then, but as a kid, I felt like they were. I saved my money for them because I wanted to own a piece of history from the comic books that I loved. They were from before my time, and I wanted to experience them and keep whatever value they did have, monetary or sentimental, for myself. You know, it was difficult limiting this list of books. I mean, there's this Wolverine issue drawn by the legend John Buscema. You want to learn how to draw comics? Look at Buscema. Incidentally, my copy of How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way by John Buscema and Stan Lee. There's this Venom series of stories where Batman is haunted by a major failure, and then he gets hooked on performance-enhancing drugs. In the end, he kicks the habit, but wow, what an interesting story. Batman, Year One. Uh, the story by Frank Miller is, of course, fantastic. And the art by David Matsukelli is so realistic and wonderful. I mean, there are so many books and issues that are important to me that I can't name them all. But they all are important because each one is a piece of a larger puzzle that came together as a sum of all of these seemingly insignificant moments and experiences. I mean, comic books have been the most important influence on me because they got me interested in art. And that is the most important and significant thing in my life now. I want to say thank you to the writers and the artists and everyone who brought my favorite stories to life. And above all, thank you, comic books. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time.